Thank you all, and uh, thank you for persevering. I'm, I'm going to ask one question to all of you, and then one question to each of you, and you can decide which you want to answer, if any. Um, but it will give you a little time for reflection. The, one of the most curious features in my mind of Education City is its aggregation of campuses and of uh, foreign institutions which are represented, um, sorry, of, of, of faculty buildings and uh, American institutions that are represented there. And, and the, one of the reasons it interests me is it doesn't seem like a conventional university model in the way we understand it, which is that there is not a division of faculties, there's a division of institutions somehow brought together under a new type of institutional formation. And one of the, one of the details of that that's curious is what it means for a university to reproduce itself. What happens when it reproduces itself? What of it does it reproduce? And I'm asking that in part because it's hard not to think about Althusser's famous text on ideological state apparatuses as a place of reproduction. So within these American schools, we have at least a double form of reproduction. We have something which happens within the university as a space of reproduction through learning, through ideological formation, whatever you want to call it. And then you also have the reproduction of the university infrastructure, faculty, organization, etc. So th the first question is to all of you. What, what do you think is being reproduced within these institutions? What is not being reproduced? What is the model of the university such that it can be reproduced? Can it be reproduced? Um, so let me move on to a second round of questions. Nazar, in, in, you finished with a statement about identity being in construction, perpetually in construction, in formation. And with that in mind, I want to think back to what you said about tradition versus modernism. That the notion of tradition, through vernacular architecture, through some kind of opposition, only appears in relation to modernism. And then you said that the condition we are in now is not modernism. It might be supermodernism, maybe not, might be postmodernism, maybe not, or whatever it is called now. And so I'm curious about whatever it is called now in your thinking, and, and then what is it that emerges in relation to whatever it is now, which is to say what formation of tradition emerges in relation to that, and, and, and if that thing that emerges is represented here in your mind at Education City, or the other thing, the supermodern, the postmodern, the other condition? Or is it somehow a combination of both? Um, and, and so these are all conflicts that I'm asking about. And, and Reinhold, in your talk, the, the image of low library in construction um, being a monument to an empire in decline um, makes me wonder what the rules that, you, that we play by within that institution that is represented by that monument in decline are at this point. If the injunction for Kant was to play by the rules, and if the, and if the conflict of the faculty and the division of the faculties, the higher and lower faculties, is somehow a schema by which one plays by the rules, um, does that schema still apply? Is that still the responsibility of the faculty within the institution to play by the rules? And, and what does that look like now? Does, is that opposition still operable? And in that image you offered of Edward Said within Low Library speaking, is that playing by the rules? Or is that somehow an important and necessary transgression of the rules? And so, you know, what are the boundaries of those rules now? And what are the divisions of the faculties that we would have to adhere to? Um, and Kevin, in your talk, you mentioned obliquely among all of the challenges facing the formation of new educational institutions and universities in the region, that the issue of the wealth 
where it comes from, the sustainability in relationship to the models of the university. And, and I wonder how that figures into your assessment of the institution. I wonder how that, your model of what that wealth is, what it impacts, what it allows, how that's different than, say, the Harvard Corporation and its forms of investment and what it allows at, uh, let's say, uh, Ivy League University, which are also sites of massive accumulations of wealth. So we'll start there. Um, I'm, I'm actually going to start by addressing your second question, which is addressed to me more specifically, and, and then try to tie it with your first question that is addressed to the three of us. Um, again, as someone who has really been concerned with the subject of tradition for, for the past three decades, I never define tradition as the static legacy of the past. Uh, and not only uh, is it something that can only be always understood in the context of, of a modern or of modernity more specifically, but rather I see tradition as a dynamic project that has to do with uh, people in the present reformulating the past for their own purpose. So in a sense, um, uh, today we actually deal with uh, traditions that were born yesterday. Uh, uh, in a sense, it doesn't really even satisfy uh, the, the standard definition that a tradition is a tradition if it passes through two generations. Um, but that's not the case. In, in, in this particular era where uh, we have the compression of space and time, uh, traditions are born and some of them actually die instantaneously. Many of them reproduce themselves and become something else altogether. So what we're really dealing with here is the invention of tradition by groups of people at specific points in time for very specific political purposes. Which would, in a sense, lead me partly to, my, to, your, to your second question, which is uh, how, how do we see what is going on in this region with all of these educational projects? And for me, and I'm going to be very blunt here, this is the sort of the elephant in the room. So we have Education City, uh, an integrated, diverse community, which allows you, in a sense, to escape other aspects of Qatari life. Absolutely. That's the way it is. Uh, Kevin presented to us the American University of Sharjah as sort of the end of this path. But as you go through this, the path, there's the men's campus and the women's campus on both sides. Educational institutions in this part of the world are emerging as the places from which one escapes local culture. I think this may be a very positive step, but it may also be an equally negative step. It has repercussions on how people behave. It has repercussions on how they view themselves. I am struck by having visited particularly the AUS campus, but also the campuses uh, the male campus of the uh, uh, University of Sharjah, how is it that even the dress code changes? The nature of the subject matter changes. The nature of the discourse changes. Is this schizophrenic? Yes, it is. All societies have their own internal schizophrenia anyway. But for me, what really concerns me is also the role that architecture really plays in that. Now, here is where architects can have a contribution as to what extent is the form that certain architects select can either challenge this division, requiring users, people uh, who come to the place to rethink who they are um, in relationship to the nation, but in, also in relationship to the educational institution. And, and some architects do that quite well, and some architects don't. Uh, again, to be very blunt, I actually think that the architects of the American University of Sharjah completely failed, in my opinion. They produced a structure and an entire image of a campus uh, that could have easily belonged to the 19th century. And of course, I understand that there is a politics here to how the building was supposed to appear. So, so the irony here is that the form of the building itself has absolutely nothing to do with the activity, the function, and, and I would even argue the style of life that emer have, has emerged within it. Uh, and it, it's this contradiction that may breed life into some of these institutions or bring the exact opposite, death. I would just like to respond to that because I think that one could take the alternative position sure. that the exterior appearance doesn't belie what's within yes. and allows a, let's say, perhaps a subversion of what happens within. Because I, I, I agree that there's a, and, and there is a, disconnect 
between the representation and a reality that exists within. Actually, I think this is a beautiful point, if you don't mind, Mark, uh, you know, as, as uh, a segue to Reinhold's, uh, you know, question to Rem, uh, is this enlightenment? A question that uh, is not answered, a question that I don't think he answered, and a question that many of us are left with either trying to answer ourselves, which may be a very good thing, but I'm not really sure that the exercise itself was deep enough to require us to engage. Well, to, to defend Rem for a second, uh, in his defense, Kant didn't answer it either, so <laughs> we don't really know. But, okay, so vis-a-vis -vis reproduction, uh, yeah, look, I mean, what I think is being reproduced, and, and I hope you hear that what I'm, much of what I'm saying is addressed to my American colleagues, I have to say, or, or people, you know, working in relationship to the American system that is inhabiting these spaces, um, but not exclusively. Uh, and, uh, but, you know, what's being reproduced are statements like education is uh, customer service. That's an, a statement you hear over and over and over again. I'm sure you've heard it. We've heard it everywhere. This is, this is the, the, what the so-called American, essentially global uh, economy speaking. And, and so every educator in this room should get up and say, no, it's not. And, and you, you know, and that's, that's the, in a sense, the silence too is deafening because that's also what's being exported is very difficult to actually resist that for largely economic, sometimes political, you know, reasons. We have, this is exactly the same in the US. It's not an accident that it's the business schools that are coming first, that's, a, that's the plan. That's the whole idea. Um, so vis-a-vis so -vis the, the Said question uh, about, you know, first of all, I mean, I, I think, you know, Said would have been the first to stand up against that kind of a statement. Uh, because he, his discourse was coming out of the humanities and it was very, very important that he, he showed how the humanities are not like, their hands are not clean no matter who you work for, who you're, uh, you know, which side you're on, the East, West, and so on, uh, because the humanities were the ones who produced Orientalism. It was linguists and philologists, it wasn't businessmen really quite yet, but, but you know, so it's this bizarre kind of combination of these forces that, that winds up being kind of living in, in places like Low Library. The Low Library is the name that we use for the dome. It, that's the official name. The, the, what, what I want to say, though, about that is that about imperial decline, it's now a ruin. It's not actually a ruin. It's, a, it's, a, it's inhabited, but it's inhabited by the administration. The books don't live there anymore. Uh, they went to another library. And, and that itself poeticizes, I think, this, this situation that, you know, because that's what universities are becoming as they become big, bigger and bigger corporations. They've always been corporations in the West, um, in, in, particularly in the US, they've always been corporate, but the, the private ones. Um, but the, they're becoming much more administrative and uh, you know, less uh, pedagogically. That, these are generalizations. Obviously, it's not true because it's still possible for someone like Said to, you know, and, and this happens everywhere uh, all the time, and, and it's what we do in, in some ways. Uh, but, but I guess the main thing that I wanted to articulate uh, were, were the, the contradictions, the tensions, the conflicts uh, around knowledge. Uh, so then when we, talk, when we speak about moving from a carbon base, just like conflicts around carbon, to quote my, our, my colleague Tim Mitchell, um, the, the um, carbon democracy, uh, yeah, we can also speak uh, about the conflicts around knowledge uh, in his, historically and in the present. Uh, in, uh, in, in similar ways. So. I, mean, I would say with regard to this question of reproduction, I, I think what's being reproduced is a, is a professionalization of the academy. It, it, that's, that's ultimately what's being reproduced. With regard to the second question, the, the specific question you asked, is how is that, is there perhaps some difference between, um, let's say, uh, institutions that, that work along similar models of, of corporate sponsorship, large endowments, and, and, and the use of that money in various ways. I, I think that what you may have here, a, a distinct uh, difference would be a greater susceptibility to a loss of autonomy. That, that, that That's ultimately how, what will happen in the next 10 to 20 years. Because I do think there's a greater susceptibility to that loss. Yeah. 
Any questions from out there? Yes. It's an interesting discussion in the sense that, um, you know, we, for instance, sustainability in a way has been, I don't know if it's the right word, but commercialized, right? In the sense that you have Bream, you have LEED, and you have to sort of, you know, ensure that you get certain credits to become uh, of a certain certification. I know knowledge has also been quantified like that. So you have uh, knowledge cities, but in order to be a knowledge city, you have to sort of check mark certain criteria to become a knowledge city. And, um, you know, a lot of what constitutes knowledge, say, in other parts of the world, may not necessarily constitute knowledge in this part of the world. So, as educators, how do you quantify knowledge? Or what constitutes knowledge when you bring a campus, a branch campus over from one end of the country, or one end of the globe to the other? I, I'll just say, um, it, it is an interesting question. I, that knowledge is a truth claim. It's a claim that something is true. Now, that can be contested, and there are different ways that that can be, that's what universities, in a sense, are for. They're, they're essentially disputational environments in, in which, in different formats like this, like we're, we're doing now, or in a seminar and whatever. I mean, that, well, that's, in a sense, the interesting architectural question vis-a-vis -vis your question is, is the, the classroom. Like, what is, how is the classroom structured such that a truth claim can be offered and then debated? That would be one, one way to think about this spatially, architecturally, and, and in a situated way, right? That, that that can happen here, it can happen, you know, in China, it can happen in New York, it can happen anywhere. For instance, just to uh, respond, um, you know, in, in traditional Islamic uh, settings, you may have a madrasa which there is no exchange. The knowledge is only one way, and you're supposed to sort of assimilate and then reproduce that in some, you know, similar context. So. I mean, uh, people could dispute that as well. Yeah, we have those. Those are called lecture classes. They, they do the same thing, like math yes. works that way. So, yeah, of course, there, there, there's, there are different degrees of authority, let's say, conferred upon knowledge. But it, in the end, you know, it's history. Um, I'm the project director of Qatar National Library and uh, I would like just to, uh, I don't answer what you want to know, but I would like just uh, to talk about this uh, subject, the knowledge, and what also in German what the word Bildung. Because uh, as I learned that in Arabic there is another word which is like Bildung. And the knowledge alone is not what the library is producing. The library shows a lot of knowledge, very different and very um, diverse, but it produces, it should produce building. And that is, I think, something which matches a little bit what uh, you were discussing. And I hope at the end this will be the result of the library. I'm very sorry. <laughs> We're being shut down. Thank you all.